Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, entrepreneurs one and all to yet another luminary interview. Uh, I've really uh, uh, have the privilege, pleasure, and, and I'm very excited to introduce you to uh, Josh Steinle. Uh As you know, I go out into the marketplace and, 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 and look for people that are uh, doing things, talking about things that can help us be more effective on our journey. And uh, what really jumped out when I stumbled onto Josh is uh, his work around what he calls the seven systems of influence. And it's a framework that uh, is used by parents and educators, business people, entrepreneurs, community leaders to really position themselves to be influential in their sphere of influence, but also, and I'm going to have Josh talk a little bit more about this today, their own lives. Now, this guy, uh, he's a prolific writer, uh, uh, author of the Chief Marketing Officers at Work uh, 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 piece that interviews uh, CMOs. He's uh, been a TEDx uh, speaker, uh, founder of MWI, which is a digital marketing agency that has offices in Hong Kong, Singapore, China, the UK, and the US. Uh, so he knows how to get out there. And uh, he's been recognized by Entrepreneur uh, Magazine and many others, uh, and humbly lives on a farm in Boston with his kids and 27 horses. So, Josh, welcome to our show today. Thank you so much, Steve. And humbly is right, because I know nothing about farmer, farming or farmers, and so it's been a very humbling experience to be on a farm. Well, good for you. That sounds like a... Uh, I mean, I don't know, at least in my mind, a, a, a wonderful uh, aspiration to get life working so well, you can just sort of, uh, you know, live life that way in a simple way. It is great. It's great to live outdoors. I was in China for a number of years in Hong Kong, and I love that lifestyle as well. But it's kind of nice to be away from the big city and be out in the country. Yeah, I can, I can imagine that. So, Josh, um, I, I want to start with your definition of influence. Um, you know, we hear in the digital uh, age now about influencers. These are people that are, in, in my slightly cynical view, or, or uh, the qualification is you know how to do a good selfie. Uh, then you've got uh, influencers that we see in uh, the political domain and and uh, in the uh, you know in in, in uh, our, our economic. Uh, domain. Uh, what would you, how would you capture or define influence from your view? At its simplest definition, influence is when something changes. Anytime something changes, that's an impact. And that impact is caused by an influence. And so when I talk about influence, I talk about it in a broader way. It's, I'm not talking about influencers on Instagram or YouTube, these kids standing in front of Lamborghinis and right. big houses saying you can make a bunch of money in the next six months. Like that's not the type of influence that I'm into. I'm more interested in how do I get my kids to listen to me and take out the trash? How do I talk to my spouse? How do I influence people I'm teaching if I'm a teacher or an academic? How do I influence my clients, my customers, the people working in my business? That's the type of influence I'm interested in. So it's more about leadership and teaching and serving more than uh, how to make a bunch of money really quick and drive fast cars. Love it, love it, and 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 completely uh, applicable. I mean, uh, all of us entrepreneurs, we uh, we're in the business of influence. I would argue, uh, you know, uh, bringing products and ideas to the marketplace, uh, uh, helping people discover it uh, requires influence. Helping people facilitating the buying process. Uh, facilitating uh, the whole advocacy part of what's necessary in business. So you're dead on, Josh. Uh, you know, influence is, is real. Uh, does influence in your mind the ability to know how to influence? I'm going I'm to have you teach us some things about that here today. But the, the ability to, to understand and execute influence as we're describing it, uh, is, is that something that carries uh, with it a, a, a visionary uh, a view in terms of uh, where we're, uh, who and what we're influencing as we go through life, the rest of life? Right. I mean, 
if we're going to have any influence on people, whether it's our kids, our spouse, our customers, we have to have some idea of what we want. We have to have some goal in mind, some impact that we want to make. And so that's really the first step of influence is defining what our dream is or what our vision is of the future. Because without that, how do we even know if we're getting it? How do we know if we're achieving success? Right, right. So you've got a model, a framework uh, that I, it's, it's fascinating to me and, and we don't have to go through all of these, but I'd like to get a take on the two or three areas of influence that uh, you feel are, are most appropriate for us to pay attention to as entrepreneurs. Vision, genius, audience, content, action, collaboration, and love. Now folks, we're going to give you a link so that you can really dive into this stuff here at the end, but but Josh, when we talk about any of those things, is it, is it progressive uh, in your mind? Uh, one comes before the other, or is there a, a place to start for the entrepreneurial uh, small business owner? Well, whether one starts before another is kind of like asking which part of a car starts first when you start a car. Yeah, there is the ignition system that starts things, but this is a system. These are seven systems, and there's seven systems that work together. So the point is not so much which one comes first necessarily, it's how do all of these work together to move you towards where you want to go. Great and so, yeah, you kind of do need to start out with vision. That's kind of your ignition system, having an idea that I want to accomplish something. How am I going to get this done? That is kind of where it all starts. That's the genesis. But after that, yeah, you do go through these kind of in a order, but then you go back and you say, well, wait a second, my genius zone system's a little weak. I need to work on that. Or my audience, I'm not really clear on who my ideal audience is. So I need to figure that out. And you're constantly going back to these systems and tuning them up and bringing them up to par with the other systems and how they're running. Okay, great. Great uh, clarification. And so, so vision obviously is where you, is, is, uh, uh, where you want to go? How, what, what are we shooting for? What's the, uh, what's the long view of, of what it is we're doing? But how is vision, uh, let's just take that one, how is vision a, an influence system? Help us, uh, help us understand that. It's what provides that more motivation. So for example, in 2013, I was running my marketing agency, MWI, and we almost went out of business. We were near bankruptcy. And so At that point, my vision was, how do we survive until next month? And then how do we dig ourselves out of this hole? And how do we make this business successful? That's what I wanted to accomplish. And so that's where my vision started. And then it was, well, Genius Zone, why am I uniquely qualified to do this? What are my skills? What are my talents that I can bring to this problem to provide a solution? And then I went through the rest of these systems. Now, at the time, I didn't have this framework. I didn't know about it. I was just doing what seemed like what I needed to do. But it was in the aftermath of that experience and achieving some success that I realized there were some steps I followed here. And I tried to map out those steps and define them so that I could use them in the future. And that's where that, this framework, these seven systems gotcha. of influence came from. That's, that's great. Yeah, that, that's what... Uh what we call a fist pounding moment when you recognize that uh, there, there's something missing here. If you'd have had that system, you probably would have navigated that time in your life a bit more confidently and, and uh, maybe accelerated it. Yes, much more quickly. That's what I was going to say is that I made so many mistakes and I look back and it's just tragic how much time I spent doing the wrong things because I didn't have a clear idea I had kind of a clear idea of my vision from a high level. Hey, I want to save my business. I want my business to grow. Yeah. But I didn't have the specifics in place and I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who my ideal audience was, which meant when it came to creating content, I was creating the wrong content and I wasn't getting the results I wanted. Once I got those things lined up, then amazing things happened. Yeah. So, okay. So we've got vision genius. That's your, uh, I would, uh, uh, can't, and it, correct me if I'm, uh, making it too simple or there needs to be more said, but, uh, you know, what are you really world-class or potentially world-class, uh, at your, your competency, your, your capability, uh, is, is, uh, would, would you, would you define that as genius? That's kind of it, but how we get there is interesting real quick. So, yeah. because we all think of ourselves as, yeah, we're better at some things than other people, but no matter what we look at in ourselves and we say, I can do X, Y, Z, 
there's somebody out there who's better at it. And that often causes us to lack confidence a little bit. And so instead of looking at a single skill like entrepreneurship or marketing or writing and saying, well, I'm not the best writer, so I can't be that. Look at the intersection and how these things overlap. Because when you start joining these together, then you can find something that you can do that nobody else can do. So for example, just to make this simple, I grew up skateboarding. That's something I'm into. I've always been into it. I ran a skate shop when I was a kid. I know people in the industry. So I know a little bit about skateboarding. I could even say that I'm an expert at the skateboarding industry, but there are 5 million other people out there who probably know more about it than I do. Mm -hmm. And I also know a bit about marketing. I've run a marketing agency for 20 years. I've written books on marketing. I've written a lot of articles about marketing. So I could say I'm a marketing expert, but again, there are a million people out there who know more about marketing than I do. Mm -hmm. But when I link these two things together and I say, how many people in the world know as much about marketing and skateboarding as I do? Now we're down to maybe 10 people. That's something really unique. And so I could say, this is going to be my genius zone, this overlap of marketing and skateboarding. And I could go to Nike or Adidas and say, hey, I can help you move a lot of shoes and sell a lot of shoes to skateboarders because of this unique overlap that I have, these two areas. Right. And so if you start looking at all your expert zones and things you're good at and you join two or three or four of them together, you can figure out a way that you are unique and special in a way that maybe there's nobody else in the world that really has that same overlap than you do. And that's your genius. Zone. I love that. Yeah, that's great. And as you're thinking, I'm, you know, of course, reflecting on myself and uh, uh, could probably do a little bit better at, at embracing uh, that intersection that you're talking about. And so now it makes beautiful sense. Then we spill into audience. So when you have that defined, the intersection you're describing, then we are a lot more clear about rather than just talking to everybody, megaphone marketing, as I call it, uh, you, you, you can be a lot more specific and resonate with uh, a, a specific audience with content that's relevant to who you're talking to, right? Right, because once you know your genius zone, or you might have multiple genius zones, but you can look at each of those and say, well, who cares about this? Who cares that I know a lot about this? And in my case, I gave the example that, hey, Nike and Adidas would be really interested in that. So that might become my ideal audience. It would be a waste of my time to go after Tesla or somebody and walk in there and say, hey, I know a lot about marketing because Uh then I'm competing against everybody else who knows about marketing in the world. But if I go to Nike or Adidas, I'm only competing against the people who know skateboarding and marketing. And it really gives me kind of an unfair advantage in that space. Yeah. It's knowing where to play and where not to play. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're laying out a great business plan here. And, and, you know, we all are aware of, you know, the exercise in finding our avatar and, and uh, making sure we're speaking their language and, and all of that. But uh, uh, I love the flow that, that comes out of this uh, model that you have. All right, so tell us about action now. So uh, the action that you take, obviously we all know as entrepreneurs, you've got to get to work. We're going to be successful a degree. Our feet are moving, but I suspect there's a little bit more to it than that based on what you've taught us so far. Yeah, so you've got vision first, figuring out your genius zone. That's who you are. Then there's your audience, who you're going to be talking to. And then system number four is content. So that comes before action. And just to touch on content briefly, this is, what you're going to produce, how it's what your message is and how you're going to deliver it. So my message for my digital marketing agency a couple of years ago when I was writing for Forbes and other publications was, Hey, I've got a digital marketing agency and we know our stuff and you should come and hire us. That was kind of the message I was trying to get out there. And my best channel for that was writing for Forbes and it was writing. It wasn't video. It wasn't social media. It was writing and posting that on Forbes. So I had my message and I had my channel for my content. In terms of action, that's where the rubber hits the road and you say, well, what am I actually going to produce here? What am I going to create? And so you see book authors, they'll say, I'm going to wake up every morning and I'm going to write for 15 minutes, or I'm going to write two pages a day. Or if it's a podcaster, they say, I'm going to record an episode every week or every day or once a month or whatever it is. There's got to be some plan there for creating that content Mm -hmm. that's going to connect with the audience that ties into your genius zone, that moves that audience to action so that then your vision becomes reality. That's how it all gets tied together. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. So your action that moves or, or catalyzes, influences action uh, in others mm-hmm. we're talking about here. 
Right. So the action is what creates the content and the content can be anything. I mean, it doesn't have to be a book or a magazine article or a video. Your example is content. The words you speak to somebody on the street are your content. If you're a parent raising a child, your example, the things you do, the things you don't do, that's content. It's all content. Nice. Okay. Now, uh, not incidentally, action is uh, in your in your model here feeds into collaboration. Uh, Josh, as you may know, uh, the Entrepreneur Excellence Alliance is the primary audience uh, for this uh, this uh, segment. Uh, we have a big emphasis on peer collaboration, but give us your insights on the critical nature of collaboration as it uh, pertains to really uh, producing the success that you're talking about here. Collaboration is the difference between being influential and being a thousand times more influential or more. It's when we work alone, we just can't do that much alone. We're just not that good at the, all the things that need to be done to exercise influence. But for example, I have a friend, Derek Anderson, he created an organization called Startup Grind and it's a collection of entrepreneurs. They meet monthly, they have chapters around the world. They have something like 600 chapters now around the world. Mm -hmm. He couldn't have started 600 monthly meetings all by himself. He had to start a company and then he had to enlist people in these local areas to start their own chapters. And he had to create that framework, that system that allowed them to do this. And now because of what he started, it's this hugely influential organization that has touched the lives of 2 million entrepreneurs around the world. That kind of influence doesn't come about by sitting by yourself and working in isolation. Right. And some people might think, well, I'm just going to write a book. That's just all by myself, right? Well, Harper Lee, she wrote To Kill a Mockingbird, and we think that's non-collaborative. But even in her case, she never would have written that book except that she had two friends who came to her and said, we know you've got a great book inside you. We're going to pay your living expenses for one year so you can quit your job and write this book. And so these two friends became her collaborator, collaborators. And that's the reason we have To Kill a Mockingbird today is because somebody came along and collaborated with her. So even at the smallest level, there's somebody that we're relying on. And if we're intelligent about that and an intentional, then we can make that collaboration work for us to increase the influence that we have in the world. Yeah, brilliant. You know, and, and I think we all know this um, uh, you know, in, in, in our heart. Uh, but many entrepreneurs, uh, uh, business owners, uh, our good news is really, really great at getting stuff done, getting it going, taking initiative, being the one that does the work. But then as you're saying, it doesn't, it just sort of melts away unless we really can figure out collaboration. And yeah, I was, I was in that spot for years and years. And once yeah. I found the right partners to work with me on my business, everything changed and uh, the business grew so much so much faster and yeah. yeah, so collaboration is, it's huge. There's so much more that we can do together with other people than we can do on our own. Yeah, beautiful, good, uh, good emphasis. All right, so the seventh system here is love. Uh, I'm really curious about how you weave that in. Uh, well, obviously we're not talking about romantic love here. And uh, when we talk about love, we're talking about passion for your topic, your content, your audience, just what your vision is, what you're trying to accomplish. There's an excitement that goes along with that. It's also empathy for your audience, really understanding who they are and where they come from. And that's not something that just happens by study or by focus groups. You really have to understand the people because you're probably one of those people. And so you're creating a service or a product that is for you, but you know that other people want it as well. And so you have empathy with your audience that well that way. And then finally, it's goodwill because you can understand people and you can be excited about what you're doing. But if you don't have that goodwill that you want to really serve people and help people, then it's all transactional and people sense that. And when something's transactional, people know you don't care about them and they're not going to care about you. You're not really creating a relationship. You're just engaging in a transaction. So that goodwill has to be there where you care about people so that they sense that and then you have real influence. You can get everything right, and if you don't have that goodwill part, yeah. it won't work. And you can get everything else wrong, and if you have the goodwill part, you'll still have some influence. Ah, oh, interesting. Okay, so uh, earlier you said that, uh, and I can see this being a, a, a 
you know, a wonderful framework uh, for uh, checking in on, you know, so how well am I doing in all these things? I think you even have an assessment on your site that uh, guides people through that check-in. But then you said you have to, uh, not have to, but uh, you want to uh, go back and, and, and check in, massage all these things as you go, as you learn. Uh, so, okay, so if we're listening to this, Josh, and we're saying, you know, yeah, I'm pretty good there. There are a couple of things I need to shore up. And we, you know, we, we kind of get things uh, rocking at a new level. Uh, in alignment with what we're trying to accomplish, then what what would you recommend as as sort of a, a rinse and repeat uh, rhythm for uh, for touching in on all these things? It really depends on what your goal is, what the vision is. So some people will have an annual big checkup where they sit down and say, "Where was I a year ago? Where am I today? What am I happy with? What am I not happy with? Where do I want to be a year from now?" And then they make big goals. We do this with New Year's resolutions. Yeah. That's the vision process. That's system number one. But you can also take that down to a daily thing where every morning you wake up and you say, okay, what are the three things I'm going to get done today? Or what's the one thing I'm going to get done today? And that's system one as well. That's still your vision. It's just, what's your vision for the year? What's your vision for the day? Or maybe you have a certain project and you say, this is a project I want to get done and I'm going to get it done. And then once I'm done, I'll have a new project. And so then I have to revisit system number one and say, well, what's my new vision now that this project right. is done? Right. The point is to make some sort of space, have a plan so that you do sit down, you think about what you want, and you intentionally go out there and get it. Because too many of us are stuck letting life happen to us. And whatever comes along, we just react to it. Instead of acting and making the world what we want it to be, we're letting the world make us what the world wants. Yeah, us to so be. true. Yeah. Wow. So, so there's not, uh, it, it's up to us, uh, but awareness, keeping it in front of us is, uh, uh, is it sounds like a really important, uh, valuable exercise. I love the daily, uh, uh, I guess, uh, reset uh, is what you're describing there that uh, in, in the context of what we where we now know we are after whatever we did yesterday and we're, we got a, a day and a week and a month ahead. Uh, sounds like it'd be a good exercise to, to practice while you're journaling. So, yeah. And so a lot of people do this through journaling. I've got a whiteboard that's right above my screen. So I look over my screen and I see today's tasks. You've got people back in the day, remember Franklin planners, we had the Franklin yeah. planner method. I mean, there are all these different methods and the method itself doesn't matter so much as long as you have a method that works for right. you and you're following. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. So tell us about how we can tap into this more deeply, Josh. This is rich stuff. Folks, uh, I know you've been uh, taking some notes here, but uh, Josh is going to guide us to, uh, to where to go to get more of this. And uh, in particular, Josh, whether you're going to mention this or not, I, I think this uh, uh, assessment that you generously, generously offer on your site is, is valuable. But what else uh, can, where else can we go to, to, to really dive into this model? So my website, joshsteinley.com, that's where the assessment is. And you've got that link I sent you that uh, you can post. And, but on my website, I'm constantly blogging about this. I have a newsletter. So every week I'm sending out content related to these seven systems. And I'm working on a book form of this, which right. crossing my fingers will be out next year. Nice. And we do coaching. I've got programs, courses, mastermind group, all sorts of other ways that people can get involved. But you can get a lot of stuff just for free by subscribing to my newsletter and reading the, my blog posts. Yeah, beautiful. And I encourage uh, folks that you do that. We're going to, Josh, have uh, the link that you referred to uh, uh, everywhere this is posted. And uh, I, I tell you, you've, uh, you, you're really getting yourself out there. I, 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 I'm uh, cheering you on here for the book because I think uh, that can be a really, uh, gosh, I could see it, it required reading. Uh, for anyone, especially uh, that considers himself a, an entrepreneur. So Josh, uh, you've been really generous. You, I, I didn't expect that we'd be able to cover the whole model today, but you did it really well. <laughs> and uh, I, I really appreciate your, your generosity and, and your time here today. Thank you so much, Steve, for having me on. Yeah. Well, folks, we're going to call it a wrap. And uh, do please tap into Josh's wisdom further. And uh, uh, really appreciate 
not only you're listening in and, and, and uh, paying attention to these tremendous interviews, but I want to strongly encourage you to take action. Actually, it's one of Josh's uh, seven systems here that are embedded in his model. And we all know this, you know, knowledge is only as valuable as the degree to which it is applied. So let's get to work on our journey to entrepreneur excellence. Have a super day. Hey, thanks again for listening. Look, if you're interested and serious about applying the wise insights from luminaries like you just heard from, I want to invite you, challenge you, in fact, to check out the Entrepreneur Excellence Alliance. Just go to entrepreneurexcellence.com. You'll see a very inspiring uh, video that we put together that outlines our manifesto and then a button will link you right on over to all the assets, the resources, the tools that we've compiled. You see, the Alliance is a team, a tribe, a community of entrepreneurs just like you that are striving to truly attain excellence, their lifetime best in every aspect of both business and life. Peer collaboration at its best, world-class coaching, abundant resources. You need to check it out, entrepreneurexcellence.com. And we'll see you over there. Thank you.